Okay, so today we are going to do a duck egg frittata. There's a couple of things I want to share about duck eggs though, one of them being the size. So take a look at this egg. This is a duck egg and here's a store-bought chicken egg. So obviously they're much different in size and duck eggs will come in all different colors just like chicken eggs will depending on the breed of chicken. So we see in size. But what I want to show you, here is a chicken egg that I purchased from friends of mine that actually raise their own chickens. So I bought these eggs from them. And look at the size, that's a chicken egg. There's the duck egg, and typically a duck egg is big. But look at the size of those chicken eggs. And then look at the size of this chicken egg compared to this store-bought large chicken egg. It's massive. And I'd like to show you what it looks like when you crack these open. This is, um, I'm gonna open up the store-bought chicken egg. And then we're going to compare that to, this is the, a chicken egg, the chicken egg that is from the farm. Look at the difference in color of the yolk and the size of the yolk. It's just crazy, the difference. So you see, you're going to get a much brighter yolk. Uh, good cholesterol is in the egg. We want to eat Omega-3 fatty acids that you're going to find are in the egg. That's really important in terms of fighting inflammation and gut repair. And here's what the duck egg looks like. So we're going to put these over here. There's the chicken egg. And then here's our duck egg. The shell is a little tiny bit harder. <laughs> but the, it's more yolk than egg white then you'll see the ratio of a chicken egg. It's massive. So you see there's a lot more yolk to a duck egg and that makes it for more, more fun for dipping. Um, there is a difference in flavor slightly. So today we're going to talk about duck eggs. Duck eggs actually contain more nutrition than chicken eggs. Double in iron per egg. They have more in uh, omega-3s than a chicken egg, and even if it's a range-free, uh, farm-fresh chicken egg, it's still going to be double. Um, as I mentioned before, they're going to help, they are an anti-inflammatory. One of the cool things about duck eggs is they leave more of an alkaline ash than a, an acidic, which most of the time when you're eating protein of any kind, you get more of a acidic residue from proteins and processed and other kinds of foods. There is a workshop that I do just on that topic. But what's interesting is with duck eggs, they have more alkaline than acidic. So it definitely is beneficial for those who are trying to stay away from putting too much acid in your body, which really should be all of us. But if you're a cancer victim, then you definitely would want to look into maybe having more duck eggs if you enjoy eggs. So today we're going to do a frittata with duck eggs. We're going to use uh, this nice cast iron pan. I've been warming it up and if you watch the video that I have on how to cook with cast iron, you'll see that the whole trick to cooking with cast iron is starting it slowly on a very low heat. I've got on my electric, I've got it on one. You can start to feel the heat radiating up off of the pan. This is when we can add our fat. Now you'll notice that my pan is seasoned. That means after I'm done using it, I clean it out either with, um, if I need to clean it out because anything might have stuck to it or because I didn't get to it right away, I'll use a coarse salt, a coarse sea salt. And I'll scrub it with a coarse sea salt or I'll also use, or I also have this little coat of mail and that will also scrub it up, but never soap of any kind, only salt, and then sometimes vinegar. If it's something really stuck in there, I'll use the combination of the two. Clean it off and then I'll coat it with some oil or some fat of some kind, lard if you have lard is perfect, and then wipe it all around and pop it in your oven or pop it in a dark place and it's perfect. That's what will keep it ready to go all the time. So you'll notice that mine is seasoned and that's what it means to season your 
your cast iron is just continually coat it with some oil so it never gets rusty and it's always ready to cook. So what we're going to do today, I, and you'll see I have a dozen uh, duck eggs here. We're going to use a dozen duck eggs and the reason why we're going to do that is we're planning ahead. And this is what I want you to picture. A frittata is a great way to go for lunches for the week. So if you are extremely busy, and who isn't, it's always nice to have a go-to food that you can do for meals on the run. And a frittata is perfect for that. So I'm going to show you by using some, it's a combination of using some leftover vegetables that I have, and how I could do this if I were going to be taking a shower and have it ready by the time it's ready to go to work, by the time I'm ready to go to work. So I have some leftover vegetables. We're going to use some roasted tomatoes. I have some roasted onions and roasted asparagus. Asparagus is a superfood. It's super for our, what's called our microbiome or the, the healthy bacteria in our gut. It's called, it, um, it's a food that they love. They contain inulin asparagus and that's a food that healthy bacteria feast on and when we're feeding our healthy bacteria that means they're growing and populating and pushing out unhealthy bacteria so the more of these super microbiome foods that we include in our diet the healthier we get it really supports gut health but it not only supports gut health it also supports our immune system that's essential if we want to be healthy so this is a superfood that we are definitely interested in including in our diet. Um, another rule of thought there is when you are healing your gut, we are replacing, removing and then replacing. In most cases when we're starting to do a repair on our gut and, and our microbiome, we are removing processed foods, and foods that we may have developed a sensitivity to. So often that will include eggs. So you might take eggs out for a couple of weeks and then reintroduce them. Duck eggs are a great one to start with, especially because of their al alkalinity. All right, so we've got our, our eggs in there. Put those two babies off to the side. I love eggs. They're one of my favorite foods. I eat them in every single possible way. So when we're doing our frittata, we're gonna whip up the eggs really, really well. Make sure to break all those eggs, combine all that in. So you just woke up. You warmed up. You're warming up your cast iron. Start that off right off the bat. Turn on your oven to 350. Preheat your oven. Now walk away, go start your shower. Lay out your outfit, because you've just started warming up your cast iron, put it on low. If you have gas, put it on low gas. If you have it on electric, put it on low on your stove, okay? You're gonna go get your outfit together, turn your shower on, and then you're gonna come back, crack your eggs, and beat them up, okay? Now in the meantime, after you've done that, before you go back and start taking your shower, you're going to throw your fat in your, that you're going to use. And I'm using some organic, whole fat, unsalted butter. You can use any kind of fat. If you, are, if you have your own farm and you use lard, that by all means use lard. All, extra virgin olive oil is a great source to put in your pan. I like using butter source of omega-3 fatty acids. The American diet is full of omega-6s. We get a lot of that from processed foods and, and bad oils. One of the best oils and fats that we can use are butter, as long as it's organic, and extra virgin, uh, extra virgin olive oil. So we definitely want to include more of those in our diet and cooking is one way to do it. Plus, they have a high smoke point so that we don't want to be burning our fat and, and cooking with it. We want it to be low and slow. So now I see this nice tinge coming on the butter, just a slight browning, and that's exactly what I want to see. I'm going to now throw my eggs in, and I'm going to add my vegetables right away. 
to it. So I'm going to spread my asparagus all around. My onions. This is a meal. This is going to be a great way to have a delicious go-to on the run throughout the and this will take you, I mean, look at the size of this pan. If you wanted to serve this for dinner with a nice salad, perfect. And then we're going to season it. We want to definitely make sure that we season this with salt. And I'm using a Celtic sea salt. And I'm going to also use some pepper. So now while it's doing its thing, I'm going to start making our, our persilada, or uh, the romesco sauce that's going to be served with this, but you're going to be in the shower. So just picture that. I want you to sort of picture how you can get this done in the morning and have a delicious lunch that afternoon and the rest of the week for just taking the little bit of time that you're doing right now. In the event that you were making this for dinner and you didn't have to go and run off and take your shower, you'll see that the egg is just starting to sort of densen. It does start to become more obvious as we see the edges start to firm up a little bit. And that's what we were looking for, but it gives us plenty of time to make our romesco. Now what I did in advance with the romesco is I roasted some red peppers. Super simple. You just take your peppers, you cut them in half, some Celtic sea salt, extra virgin olive oil, pop it in the oven at 350 for about 20 minutes or until you start to see the skin turning brown. And that's what you want to see. Now some people will pull those get the skin off. I like the skin. Leave it on as far as I'm concerned. But I'm taking two full peppers and then I'm going to, now true romesco, this is a recipe from Spain. Uh, a true romesco has It always has macadamia nuts or hazelnuts. It has uh, garlic. It has extra virgin olive oil. It has some kind of an acid, so you can put vinegar or you know lemon or lime. But the true romesco has typically vinegar. It has tomatoes. It has bread. It's a wonderful dipping sauce. I like to. I have a little bit of a change up on this, so I'm not putting. A lot of those ingredients in so that makes this gluten free because there's no bread in it um, and I'm using roasted garlic a lot of times you'll find the true recipe has raw garlic so this is a roasted complete head of garlic that I'm throwing in there I roasted this, this is, you'll also find on the website there's directions on how to roast garlic so make sure to squeeze it all out you want to make sure you do this after it's cool too that's really important that you've let the you've completely let the garlic cool down now the reason why I'm also um, putting basil in here, which you typically won't find that in a romesco, is because I'm putting basil, I'm putting basil in my frittata. So I wanted to complement the dish. So I'm putting in, I roasted about a cup of grape, organic grape tomatoes, the same way I roasted my red peppers. Okay. I'm putting in about a cup of fresh basil. Didn't even bother taking it off the stem, just throwing the whole thing in. A lot of times you'll find that it's parsley that you put in instead, but you can change it up. It doesn't have to always be the same old, and that makes it yours, doesn't it? And then I'm going to just add to that about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. This is where it will start to become more what you like to taste. I'm going to put about an eighth of a cup or about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And you can use any. You can use balsamic vinegar. When I use the apple cider vinegar, it has all this, what they call mother, the mother. So that's all full of enzymes and healthy bacteria in there, um, full of enzymes and nutrients in there that you want to include as much of when you're healing your body. So I like to include, um, in recipes that I use vinegar, I like to use apple cider vinegar. It's fermented, and that's just another way to get good fermented food. And then I'm gonna season it with about two teaspoons of salt. Now, as we start to mix it up, you're gonna taste it, 
And as you go, then you can adjust your sweet, your sour, your salty. I'm also adding, this is a half a cup of cashews. Instead of the hazelnuts or the almonds, I'm putting in some cashews. And I pre-soaked my cashews. And the reason why I do that is because nuts can be difficult to digest. There's an acid in nuts called phytic acid that can make it very difficult for us to digest. So to get all the nutrients that we can from the food, we want to prep it in advance. So it takes nothing. You just take a cup of your um, cashews and you soak them in water and you leave them for about three hours. And then you rinse them off and they're ready to use. So this is a half a cup of cashews. And now we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and blend it. I've got it here in a, micro, uh, a Vitamix, but you can use any kind of blender that you might have to do something like this. And this is gonna complement this frittata so nicely. It gives it the tartness and the sour, and the sweet from the tomatoes and the peppers. It's just so delicious. It's gonna be full of flavor. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit now. Now one note with the romesco, and this will be like a lot of the different sauces that I show you. It's really about, after you start to blend it, it's personal choice as to how smooth you'd like to see it. So you can see right now it's really chunky. If, you, if you're good with that, you can serve it right like that right now. But I like to get it just a little more smooth. Personally, I just like the way it looks on the plate. So I'm gonna let it go a little longer. nice creaminess and it's pourable and it smells incredible mm, it's so good you're gonna taste all those flavors now one thing as you start to taste it adjust your seasoning now this is really perfect the salty background with the sweetness and the tartness all mixed together is really what you want. It's going to have a little bit of everything, but as you start to mix and stir, just taste it and see if you'd like to adjust it a little bit more. So that's ready to go. Now what we start to see here with our frittata, you've come out of the shower and you can see that it's starting to firm up just a little bit. That's exactly what you want to see, that it's just starting to set up. Go back in the, in the bathroom finish drying up and then come back. One of the other um, important ingredients to this is adding the drippings from your roasted red peppers and tomatoes if you happen to roast them that day. So get it all in here. This is all part of the, the magic that happens when you start blending it all together. The flavor that comes from the drippings itself is phenomenal. So don't throw that away. Got the juices from your peppers, your tomatoes, and the the olive oil extra, and the salt, and it's just so good. So let's give that a quick blend. Okay. Okay, so now let's take a look back at our frittata and we now see the edges are really getting firm. This is when we get it popped into the oven to finish the cooking process. You just want to take your temperature up to about three on your electric stove. It's going to be at the perfect setting. It's going to have set up perfectly to be able to pop it in the oven and cook the rest of the way. Another note that I want to make is that a frittata is not going to be dry and baked. We're not looking for it to be more quiche-like. It's going to be more custardy. So a perfect frittata is one that also has cheese. So if you have six eggs, you're looking at putting in at least a half a cup of a shredded melting cheese. 
This one I'm not going to put a melting cheese with it. I'm gonna actually use a chevre, a goat cheese, but if you prefer cow cheese, then use something like um, mozzarella or you can use Swiss cheese. Anything that melts really easily is a great cheese to put on here, but again, you want the ratio to be about six eggs to at least a half a cup and even a cup of cheese. I don't want to put too much cheese on here. I'm happy with the amount of protein I have on this dish, but I am going to add some of the chevre. It's a nice soft cheese, and I find, personally, I find goat cheese to be a lot easier to digest than cow cheese, and even sheep cheese. I do use both. So I will just sort of crumble this in and around. It won't do a whole lot of melting, but it does add a nice flavor to this frittata that I really enjoy. So we're just going to sprinkle that around. This is a four ounce serving and you, they even come herbed so, with herbs so you can even add that if you like. And you would do that just before you're going to pop it in the oven. Okay, so as I mentioned, you turn up the temperature to about 3-4 or just on a very low, a little bit higher than that lowest setting on your gas flame. But you're going to see that the edges have gotten really nice and firm. You can do this with your spatula and you'll see they go around perfectly like that. Now it's ready to pop in the oven. So we're going to pop it in the oven for, and set your timer for 9 minutes. Okay, there's my timer. Let's get out the frittata. Look at that. That's exactly what you want to see. It's nice and fluffy. It's completely set. It's completely set and firm. And that's exactly what we're looking for. It's beautiful. Now some people like to have a also, uh, a little brown maybe, a little bit of goldenness to it. If you, if you like that, if that's what you want to see, then go ahead and pop it under your broiler for like a minute. But don't cook it until that point because then it's overdone. It gets really, really dry. But that's what you're looking for. There's your frittata. I'm going to show you how to unplate it so that you can do that. If you're going to serve it for dinner, I'm going to show you how to unplate from the pan. If we did everything right, we let the pan warm up properly and we hit it with a nice coating of fat and we let it cook up slowly, then we can do this. And you're just going to take your spatula and sort of scoop out the sides like that and then get a plate. What you do want to do is let it set for about 10 minutes before you flip it and cast iron pans are super heavy, so you might need help, but flip it the other way around, and voila, you've got yourself your frittata. Now because it's in the, in the cast iron that way, it's super brown, so we want to have the presentation side up, so just flip it back, and there's your pretty side. Now you can serve it that way, and you can see it came dressed with with some nice basil. <laughs> and then we just want to garnish it with our basil. Just like that. Now it looks pretty. You can serve it as, a, as dinner, main course, with a nice salad. Or you can serve up with the um, romesco. So now that's how we would present it at the table. It looks really pretty. You want, every, you want your guests to see what you did right on top or your family. But if you're going to take this for the rest of the week, cut it in your 12 or 7 or however many pieces that you want to serve and get through the week with in terms of lunches, let's say. And keep it in your Pyrex dishes. But if you want to have lunch, then serve up your, your frittata, cut your piece. go on there and let's take a bite. The 
the Romesco just highlights everything perfectly. So try that. You'll see it takes really about 20 minutes tops and you're using your leftover vegetables in the fridge, whatever you had the night before. Make them into your frittata. That'll be lunch for the week. A healthy, alkaline, gut healing, delicious dish for the week. Enjoy your frittata with romesco sauce.